Take all one of these little barbs here, you believe it. Figure you better see this, Mr. Bear. How far does it go? Yeah, plumb across the canyon. Uh, who in creation would want to wire off a trail? You can't farm up here. Nothing up here but rocks and cactus. About that lake that's east of here. Well, it's blown dry. No more water, it'll Comanche Wells. Good ten miles on. All right, who's got the cutters? All I have. Slice it down the middle, roll it back to the banks. Yeah, but what happens? There's got to be some reason this fence is up here. I suppose you found a way to keep a cow alive without water? No. Then cut it. The point will be here soon. So cut it quick. Yeah, I'll make it quick, Rowdy. Someday he's going to say, take your time, boys, and we'll die of the shock. Well, Quince, that's one thing about being trail boss. You can say just about anything you want. Yeah. I don't know. I still wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Well, that's, that's where you and me differed. I tell you about Boonesville? No. Well, I had an offer down there. Hit up my own drive. Oh. Why didn't you take it? Well, I wish I knew. Nothing to it, really, except you can't make any mistakes. Like cutting barbed wire when you don't know the reason it's up here in the first place. I still think we should have checked around a little. Checked around where? In town. That wishbone went in there this morning for supplies. Ah, we could just, just as easily have ridden in there and... Oh! Me off this wire. Where are you hit? Ooh, well, uh, let me just say, I'm gonna probably be riding a little high in the saddle for a while. Now clear out of there. Get me over by those rocks. Get the boss. What about you? Oh, get the boss. Don't worry about me. All right. No, no, he's running. Leave him alone. The other one's mighty quiet. Charlie? Yes, sir. See if he's dead. That's a load off my mind. I thought there for a minute we might have to bury a stranger in the family plot. Still might, sister. Mm-hmm. Brother Gus? Yeah, I see him, sister. Good. Well, you take the left. Brother Charlie, you take the right. I'll just kind of roam around in the middle. Don't come too close. Where are they? Up there in those boulders. Hold your fire! 
Let me talk to my ramrod. Trail boss, huh? What do you say, Brother Gus? Should we let him talk to that poor hurting ramrod? Might as well. They're still on their side of the fence. All right, cowpoke, come ahead. Hey, now, that is a shame. Was she after beef passage? I don't think so. She would have said. Hey! We got 3,000 thirsty steers headed this way. Then you better turn them before I shoot them, boy. Ain't no moss horn gonna tramp over my land. They haven't had water for three days. They gotta come through. Besides, this ain't your land. You can't fence off open trail. You want a bet? Jim, you think there's a chance of scaling that mountain and getting around behind her somewhere? Well, not unless I knew where they had their lookouts posted. Well, they sure ain't gonna let us in, map the place first. Yeah, that's for sure. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm hurt. <clears throat> Somebody's gonna patch me up. What makes you think they'd uh, take you back up in the canyon? They'd probably just send somebody down. Well, then we'd have a hostage, wouldn't we? Well, even a nester wouldn't be dumb enough to fall for a trick like that. Well, we ain't gonna know till we try. True. Yeah, all right. Lady! You got a doctor? Why? Man's hurt here. Need some help. Uh, he wasn't hurt so bad he couldn't pull a trigger. They got something up their sleeve. I'll move him back a little. No, hold it, Gus. Cowhand's too dumb to be tricky. Probably too dumb even to back away from a fight unless he knows he can't win it. What if we showed him they couldn't win? Your party. All right, mister, send him through. I'll see what I can find out. Spider and the fly. Huh? Well, she agreed almighty quick. I think I better try and tag along with you. Huh? He's taking off his gun belt. We didn't invite both of them. Well, they ain't just any two. How far do you suppose a herd could get without a trail boss and a ramrod? We hit that water just where you said we would. What happened to your crippled up friend, Rose? Oh, uh, well, he had a little accident back there by the barbed wire, but he'll know better next time, won't you? Oh, isn't it just like me, bringing two strangers to the house and not even knowing your names? What's your name? Rowdy Yates. Yours? Favor. Favor? Yates, I want you to meet my brothers. This is Eddie. That's George. That's Otto, Frank, Walter, Albert, and Pete. Left Charlie back there by the boulders. That's Brother Gus. Gentlemen. Eddie, last time I noticed that old medical kid of mine was in the barn. Would you be kind enough to get it for me? Yes, ma'am. You're a medical kid? Yeah. You the doctor? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no what? You're a woman. Well, danged if I ain't. What about it? No woman's gonna patch me up. Who patched you up when you were a baby, or Paul? Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, boys. Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Hey, Brother Gus. Yeah, Rose. You don't happen to recall the trick the Rebs used when they used to go home on a raid. Oh, you mean the hideout gun under the shirt? Yeah, that's the one. Maybe you ought to relieve Favor of his artillery. 
We wouldn't want him to fall down and shoot himself. Now, would we? Mr. Favor? Who is she in the war? A general? No, sir. Just a Jayhawker, like the rest of the family. Mr. Cornelius, I hope you realize you're in a fight you can't win. Now, this canyon's been open trail since the Spanish mapped it. She just can't hold back a whole trail herd. She's already held two back, Mr. Fay. Two? Yes, sir. Texas herds? Yes, sir. I believe they decided to head west. And then they went north up through the foothills. Texas men run from a Kansas woman. Yes, sir. I've heard everything. Yes, sir. And I really would suggest that you'd run, too. Unless you want to just sit out here and uh, the whole season and miss your market. Mr. Cornelius, if my herd sits out there one more day, I'm not going to have a herd to take to market. They're dying of thirst. Well, that's a problem. So will you please tell your sister to have that wire down by noon? Oh, yes, sir. Would you also like me to tell the tide to stop and the earth to spin backwards for a while? But look, you're a man. What are you so mighty afraid of her for? Now, sometimes we get fear and habit all mixed up, Mr. Favor. Rose's bossed this family ever since her folks died. And she showed good sense and we've prospered. But I'll grant you, somebody ought to stand up to her. For her sake, too. What on earth does she want this canyon for, anyway? Farm it. Farm? Well, she can't farm this land. She can't? Well, now that is a shock. I guess we'll just have to take that whole barn load of food she harvested and put it back in the ground. Mr. Favor, she'd farm the moon if she could get to it. And I'm not too sure she can't do that. But is she, anyways, a witch? <laughs> no, sir. She's just the smartest, toughest, stubbornest one human being you'll ever run into. Why, when she was four, she could outspell and outfigure any school teacher that come to this house. At 12, she could cook better than a Boston chef and sew better than a Philadelphia tailor. I ain't never seen a man could match her, except one. Who, oh, President Abe Lincoln? <laughs> no, he was a major, 46 Illinois rifle. Came up through our neck of the woods on a recruiting trip. Looked a little bit like you, matter of fact. I mean, the same height, and same coloring and all. And uh, just about as stubborn. And too stubborn to marry you, too, I hope. Uh, he was killed at Vicksburg. Hmm. Yes, sir. You looked a whole lot like you. Oh, oh hush. Oh, oh, oh. Well, thank you, boys. You can let him up now. You uh, want one of us stay with you, Rose? No, no, no. You go ahead, George. I'll be all right. Yes, sir. Ooh. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it, Yates? Was it? Where's my hat? What's your hurry? Come on, come on. Give me my hat. <laughs> I hope you found out everything you want to check on. Come here for anything except to get the bucks out of my, out of me. Yeah, well, you have it your own way. Too bad you couldn't stick around and meet the rest of my brothers, though. The rest of them? Yeah, the big ones. They're on guard duty, making sure nobody comes in over that mountain. Yates? You know, you strike me as being a lot more sensible than that bullheaded boss of yours. Maybe you ought to tell him about those lookouts and about how stupid it would be to try and tromp through my canyon. Well, I can't tell him anything. I ain't trail boss. Oh, Yates. Now, leading is a matter of convincing. You may be smart enough to decide the best way of doing a thing, but unless you can convince someone you're right, you don't deserve to be boss. Get out of here, huh? 
I hear the route west of here is really very scenic. I hope you enjoy it. Well, I don't see how I can do that, considering I'm going by way of the canyon. You still set on that? Very set. I guess maybe we'll just have to keep you all here in the guest room until your boys move those cows out and around those mountains. Let's see now, it should be, I reckon, a few minutes past 10. Mr. Yates and I aren't back to the herd by 10.30. My men have orders to come and get us, all 25 of them. You're bluffing. You want to see my hand, fella? I mean, lady, uh, all you have to do is call it. You know, I can't rightly remember when I've met any human being that I felt such simple revulsion toward as I do you. Well, now, I must say, the feeling is so mutual. On. No choice. We've got to find some ways to get through. It'll not be so easy, senor Favor. Well, there's another way. Maybe we could go. Look, you want to go west, you go west. We've got to take those cars down that canyon. Yeah, right. Well, there's no other way we can go, but... What's on your mind, Roddy? Well, uh, the way I figure, Sister Rose hasn't got a legal leg to stand on, right? Right. Well, why don't we go get a sheriff? Let him cut the wire for us. There's a town not too far from here. I'm afraid that woman wouldn't let a sheriff any closer than she'd let us. Besides, is there time? Either our horses get to water soon, or I would not answer for any one of them. Well, look at it this way. If we go through that canyon and we kill somebody, we'll probably get stuck around here for six months on a murder charge. We'd lose the whole herd. Hmm. Ah, all right. You come into town with me. Jimmy, take over. Larry, uh, you sure you ain't already trail boss? Ah, uh, well, Quinn's... Ooh. Boston ain't so hard. It's just a matter of convincing, that's all. How long a ride it is into that town? Well, only the law of survival. Big Will's in there, cutting up. Who's this Big Will? Who's Big... Mister, did you ever hear of John L. Sullivan? Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, well, let me put it this way. Big Will makes Mr. Sullivan look like the short doll on a wedding cake. There goes the mirror. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Yeah, uh, Brian, personalized undertaking. Uh, I hate to be killed to and break up a good fight, but uh, I'm afraid there's a friend of ours in there that might need a little assistance. Now, would you mind go getting the sheriff before somebody gets hurt? E sheriff? Why, there ain't been no sheriff in El Crucero for six months. Big Will don't approve of sheriffs. 
And what Big Will says goes, huh? Yeah. How come you let this fella, Big Will, buffalo you like that? One. Yeah, man. Four aisles. Back up, back up. Make way for him. Two. I said, I, I heard. Three. That answer your question? What are you doing, fella? Yeah, you're supposed to be getting supplies. That is it. Now he's made me mad. Break your... Uh, put him down, huh, mister? Go away, boy, before I slap you dead. I said put him down. <laughs> You didn't need to bother. I could have had him in another minute. Uh, sure. Anybody know where this fellow lives? Uh, yes, he lives in the canyon there. Last name wouldn't be Cornelius, would it? Yes, it would. Yeah, I'll take him back on your horse. Get the herd started, you can go back with Wish in the wagon. All right. All right, come on, rise and shine. Rise and shine. That's it. What a nice day. Yeah, come on. Let's go. Move. Supplies all right? Well, yeah, sure, but what are you two doing in town? There was some barbed wire strewn across the trail. We came in to get the sheriff to cut it down. Well, you're out of luck. They don't have any sheriff. Yeah. I guess you were kind of surprised at what happened, weren't you? Yes, sir, neighbor. I'm frank to admit I was surprised. Yeah, well, funny you didn't recognize him. Who? Oh, Gil Favor, the last of the really great lawmen. The last of the what? Lawmen. Oh, yes, uh, lawmen. You mean he wears a badge? Oh, well, uh, not right now. Uh, he's between assignments, you might say. <laughs> you might say that. I wish, uh... Wish you remember the you remember the time that Gil uh, brought in young Billy? Not that Billy. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's brought in so many they kind of all run together in my mind. this small. No, no, he could never consider a thing like that. Of course, if maybe you all got together and uh, appointed him, what could he do? Uh, what could he do? Can 
might be. Spitting image, though, ain't it? Another Cornelius. Baby? Yeah? I want to talk to you. Well, then, come on down, girl. Let's go, boy. What happened? No, he hit me and knocked me out. He knocked you out? Now, nobody's ever done that before, not even me. Well, I guess this is the first time for everything, Rosie girl. Rosie? You talk like you got us licked, Mr. Favor. Oh, I have, Brother Gus. You see, I intend to have Big Will here right alongside me when I cut that wire. Oh, really? What makes you think I won't shoot at my own kin, Favor? Would you? No. Shoot around him, though. He may be wide, but he ain't wide enough for all of you to hide behind. Woman, you are beat. Mr. Favor, Mr. Favor, Mr. Favor, sir. Mr. Bryan, we're a little busy here right at the moment, and I have the feeling we're going to be a lot busy in a minute. Okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. I like to see a busy peace officer. Peace officer. By order of the town council, I hereby appoint you sheriff of El Crucero County. And I'm mighty sorry we didn't recognize you the very first minute you rode into town, Marshal. What the blue blazes? Boss, I'm, I'm really sorry. They wormed a secret out of me. Oh, you. Which secret? Well, you know, about you and your fine, brave work cleaning up the West. The appointment was unanimous. You can't back down now. Oh, I can't, huh? Boss, if you're the law then that means the law is on our side, doesn't it? Now, hold on just a minute. Now, shut up, will you? Mr. Bryant, is this uh, real, legal? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, 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 well. Rose Cornelius, I order you in the name of the law to open this here pass or suffer the consequences. Oh, you do, do you? Well, let me tell you something. Mr. Bryant, what would you say would be the penalty for uh, obstructing justice and, and insulting a peace officer? Well, I don't know. In 30 days? That sounds about right. Oh, Big Will, you can go on back home. We won't be needing you no more. Now, you take your clammy hands off me! Tell it to the judge, Put lady. Put me down! Shut him down, Gus! But, Rose, he's the law. You traitor! You're all traitors! Oh, put me down! Let me go! Well, tell me, I need a good laugh. <laughs> Crusader of El Crucero, the captain of the clan Cornelius. And yet she yells, she kicks, she wiggles like uh, any other mortal female. You got the sense <laughs> of humor of a ghoul in a graveyard at midnight, you know that? It ain't funny. <laughs> Sorry. No man ever got the best of me, and no man ever will. It ain't funny! Hey! Hey, you all right? Leave me alone. <clears throat> I don't need your help. Oh, boy, you're a mess. Oh, man. There's some water down there. I'll dampen it for you. Oh. You can do it. Will you relax? I'm just going to untie your hands. Now, what you want to do that for? So if I try to escape, you can shoot me in the back? Hey, you know, you might solve a lot of problems with that. Well, I can't walk, so you might as well forget it. Whew, ain't that a mess. Wash off. 
None but good, clean dirt. Hey, now. Look at that. Which is butter. You'd hardly have to put a plow to this. Just drop the seeds and jump back. What would a cowpuncher know about farmland? Well, I know I'd like to have about a hundred or so acres of this. I'd like to get the feel of grown, creating things. Put up a barn right over there. The cows haven't had a ride. Crazy dreams. What's the matter? My face dirty, too? No. You remind me of somebody. Hmm? Probably a picture I saw of Lucifer in a book once. <laughs> That's all, so. Read much? Yeah. Cuts the loneliness. How on earth can you ever get lonely around a bunch like that? Don't seem possible, does it? But it happens. Rose, how come you picked the canyon to settle in? I like the looks of the soil. It's about 80% rock. I don't know. What's it matter anyway? It doesn't really matter. It's uh, just interesting that uh, you choose a place that you knew you'd run into a fight. I didn't know. As a matter of fact, you're the first one that's had the courage to fight. I kind of admired you for it. Well, not, not admired exactly. Oh, boy, I bet I look a mess. Don't know why I should care, though. I'm only going to jail. The fight. The time not to go. Wait for the first light. Uh, ready to move out over the Cornelius artillery, too? Yeah, well, I mean, with Rose here in jail and everything, I thought... Well, the ten brothers are still out there, though. All ten of them. Yeah, but... Uh... Oh, well, I get it. Can she hear me? I doubt it. Well, how about this? How about uh, me going out and starting a rumor that maybe you're mistreating her here in jail, and the brothers are going to have to leave and come on down here and get her out? So as soon as they move out of the canyon, then we move right on through. Very good, except for one point. Yeah, what's that? She ain't here. I released her. You released her? What'd you release her for? She'll just go right back up in that canyon. Yep. Well, she's the cement that holds that family together. How are we going to get across there now? She's a woman. Women's been known to change their minds. Oh, not that woman hasn't. Well, I, I guess there's nothing left to do except go back to the herd and figure something else out. Well, you go on ahead back. I, uh, I got some thinking to do. Yeah, well, you can do some thinking back at the drive, can't you? Well, I... I, um... Yeah? I'm thinking of quitting the drive. What was that? It's such a crazy idea. We've talked of it before. Well, sure, we've all talked about it, but... You, you know that stretch of land took here in the canyon? Yeah. Well, it ain't never been filed on. 
It's all clear. I was thinking of grabbing me off a hundred acres of it or so. Well, sure, yeah, it's great land and all, but I thought you were gonna wait to settle down until you met a woman that you... Oh, oh, no. I never said nothing about no woman. You didn't... You didn't have to. Now, look, boy. Look, I mean, it's your life, but, uh, but what about the herd? After all, you know, you you got a herd to run. Who's going to head the herd up? You're qualified, ain't you? Me? You've headed it before when I was sick or gone off somewhere. The owners wouldn't object. Trail boss? Yeah, yeah, until I make up my mind one way or the other. Unless you don't want it. I'll take the job. It's just that... All right, then. Now, get out of here and give me a chance to think, will you? Take the wagon with you. I won't be needing it. Right, uh... You keep me informed, will you? I'm trail boss. <laughs> Whoopee! I'm Red Riding Hood. through? I don't know. I'll ask her, though. What happens if uh, she says no? Look, Mr. Favor, the, the men weren't exactly excited about the idea of following you through that canyon. Now, when they find out I'm heading up the drive, I don't know. You scared? No, I'll go it alone if I have to, but... Well, I was just thinking about the owners. Is it going to be fair to them? Well, we'll be moving out at 7 o'clock. So I don't see you. like it, Gus. What's come over her anyway? Just relax, George. Relax? Do you know what she's doing inside that bedroom? What is that stink? I didn't have any perfume, so I crushed some honeysuckle blossoms. Gotta get me some pockets. You see? I sure do. Don't suppose there have been any visitors drop by. Just how would you expect them to get past the lookouts? I left word. Rose, you sure you're not sticking your chin out too far? You can't be certain he'll show up. What a surprise. I mean, whatever would bring you to this neck of the woods, Sheriff? Oh, sheriff no more. I'm retired. Besides, I... Uh, I come to ask you a question. Well, I... I know, Gus. Uh, this concerns you, too. Guess you'd best stay. You see, I... I'm thinking of quitting the drive. 
settling down here in El Crucero. There's one thing that still worries me, though. What? The herd. Well, you, you gonna allow him to go through? Yeah. You will. Sure. Well, that's fine. That's just fine. When can they get started? Well, we have to dig the potatoes and get in the corn. Say a week after next. Week after next? I don't see how I can cut it much shorter than that. Oh, gross. they got to be started by tomorrow, latest. No. Now, wait a minute. There ought to be some agreement we can come to. All right, then. That herd has to be in Comanche Wells by sundown. We'll um, keep the herd away from the house and the barn. We'll do our best to keep them clear of the crops. But we're coming through. We? I thought you wanted to start something brand new here, Favor. Why should those cows concern you any more than they do us? It won't concern me once they're safely through. In the railhead stockyards. I don't understand. You know what kind of a woman I am, Favor. You couldn't possibly expect me to back down on a point as important as this. No, I guess I couldn't. I even guess that's part of the reason why I like you so much. Let me win this one. Make this one concession, I won't ask you again. If I did, what would you think of me? I'd be proud. Sure of that? Well. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Favor. Don't you get the joke of it yet? We just keep trying to cut each other down to size. Die in the attempt. And whoever cut the best, he's the biggest loser. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something I've never told any man before in my life. I love you. But I swear, if you cross that wire, I'll kill you. Any longer. Get ready to move them out. Ready. Everything set? Are you taking the herd through, Mr. Favor? Straight through to the end of the line. And everything set. Only one thing, I uh, I never did cut that bottom strand down there. Oh, yeah. It seemed those posts weren't any too stout. Give me some cover, huh? Right, everybody keep them busy. Click till I've had my shot at favor. When he falls, you're on your own. Is that clear? Rose. Shut up, Gus. All right, start him through!
moment. I'll be back this way in just a couple of months. Oh, well, now, ain't that sweet? What am I supposed to do, get out the flags and lead a parade? Well, don't you press your luck, mister. Next time, I'm going to oil that trigger first. If this is what love means, I don't want any part of it, not ever. Hey, good looking. Who, me? Well, I sure didn't mean him. Who does this land belong to? Why do you want to know? Well, I'm looking for a homestead. Settle down. Find me a sassy wife. Then you're in the wrong pew, Buster. This land's mine. At least it will be as soon as I can get to town to claim it. Now shove off! Now look, lady. If you and me are going to be neighbors, you're going to have to mend your ways. I said I was looking for a sassy woman. Not a loudmouth. You? Or am I out of line, mister? Oh, no, look at me. Um, I'm just uh, passing through. Are you going to let me go, or do you want a good sock in the jaw? <laughs> Sassy and spirited. Entonces, venga. What do you think that is? Well, one thing's sure, Jesus, it ain't no alligator. You better go get the boss. See. Sí. in the river.
got some fever. Don't seem like anything's broke. He must have just bellied up. Well, some blankets and some of my stew will fix him. Wayne Scarlet, give to Lazan, drag him over to the chuck wagon. Boss. Where I grew up, leg irons meant only one thing. Chain gang. Don't see any striped suit. Ain't hard to get rid of a stripy suit. If there was any. By the time you get through talking about this man's past, he isn't going to have any future. Now he needs help, and now. Uh, well, I said to drag him over the chuck wagon. Mushy, hot up the fire. Yes, sir. Say, you want me to send a man up to Split Rock? It's a 60 mile ride. For what? I'll bring back a sheriff, the way I see it. Law men and lay guys used to go together. Can't you at least wait and hear what the man's got to say? Well, there might be trouble, though. So we got trouble. Roddy. Hmm? Let's just say that uh, I don't like chains. Not even when they're broken. All right? Fred about. How's he doing? Well, fever's about broke. He'll be coming out of it any minute. Well, fine. Hey, maybe now you can spare some time for mushy stew. Mushy fixed stew? Well, I'm a guessing that's what it is. Hard to tell for sure. Oh, turn my back. That's all I gotta do. Just turn my back. What do you call that? A slum gullion, just like you make it, Mr. Wishbone. Just like I make it. Since when do I ever make stew out of bare bones and potato peelings? All the time. More smartly, Mark, out of you, and I'm going to part your hair from the ankles up. Oh, it's wonderful having Wishbone back on the job again. Oh, yeah, it's so peaceful. Uh, must be because his patient is... Boss? <laughs> Just stand clear. Hey, uh, let's drop that thing, huh? No, none of you. Come any closer. Nobody's gonna hurt you. There ain't an axe in the world that can beat a bullet, mister. You better put that down. Yeah, I'll put it down. I'll pick it up and put it down all night for you. After you let go of them gun belts. All right. You know, uh... You think I'm a bluffin'. You just keep on coming. Look, who you are and what you are, it ain't no never mind to us. That's your problem. It's a cattle drive, not a courthouse. So you got two choices. You use that axe, you'll end up back in the river where you come from. Or you can drop it, 
Come on in and have something to eat. Well, might be I mistook you for someone else. It might be I didn't. But like you said, a man's a fool to buck a house tiger on an empty stomach. Mushy, spoon up some of the broth. Yes, sir. Now, uh, who are you, mister? Jagger. Boulevard Jagger. This is Wishbone, our cook. Roddy Yates, Ram Run. I'm trail boss, Gil Favor. Cook, Ram Run boss. <laughs> Even sounds like a cattle drive. <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry about the axe. I guess I made a mistake. It's good to have Mr. Wishbone. It's the only way to steam a fever and bone out. You always travel with iron ballast? Only when I drag my foot, Mr. Ramrod, I forget what I am. What are you? I'm a walking, talking, traveling Tennessee sharecropper with a itch in my sitting pocket, a yard wide hole behind my belt, and a ten color rainbow between my ears. Uh, if you're up to it, uh, we'd appreciate some straight answers. I'll see if I can't find something more to fill that hole behind your belt. I yeah, like starting with the leg iron. <clears throat> leg iron ain't a beginning. It's an ending. Well, then, uh, why don't you start wherever you want? <laughs> wherever I want, Mr. Faber. Hmm. Might be, should be the time the land got so poor, took two roosters to crow once. <laughs> I decided to put myself out of my misery. Scared my old pistol wouldn't work. So I got me a gallon of coal oil, a piece of rope, a bottle of rat poison, rolled me out of the lake under the branch of a tree, Run the noose around my neck, pour that oil all over myself, ate the rat poison, set myself afire. Figuring to shoot myself just as I kicked the boat out from under my feet. Well, that fool pistol shot the rope in two. I fell in the river, put the fire out, got the choking, and throwed up the poison. <laughs> <laughs> Well, after that, I figured my luck had to turn the other way. So I just picked up one foot and put the other one down behind it, and that's where it started. Poor, ignorant, little old dirt digger from Tennessee trying to put a set of traces on sundown. Now, dreams like that bust slow. Mine didn't come apart till I... Try to talk my way past a six-bit bill in a saloon back down the line of ways. Argument started. Finished in front of a sheriff. A man said, six dollars is 60 days. And me, six great big bits in the hole already. <laughs> work it off on the bond, they said. Ranch work, 60 days, and then you can keep on traveling. Well, since anything's better than... Four walls, nine bars. I made my mark and took the ranch. Sixty days I put in. And then I allowed us how I'd start traveling again. But this here rancher, he sees it different. Figured I owed him more time. And to make sure he got it, I got this. But it wasn't strong enough to hold this traveling man. I busted that chain and started to run. Didn't stop till I hit that river. That's when you woke up with an axe in your hand. There's a thing about being your own man, Mr. Amron. Like the feel of a swamp still tangle leg when it first hit your middle. A 
belly full of fireflies. Come slow to me being born with another man's color around my neck. Get my weaning on black snake whips and back busting work from can to can. Can to can? Yeah. Work from the time you can see in the morning till you can't see no more in the night. All us sharecroppers got for it were do notes at the company store, the back of the platter's hand. But that's done now. Put it behind me when I took the traveling and found me a place in the sun. And I figure I earned my belly full of fireflies. And there ain't any man big enough to chase him away. Uh, yeah. Maybe, mister, but I've never seen a man could travel very far without a belly full of real food. Now you can go right ahead. Hey, amen, Mr. Wishbone. I feel I could wear myself to a jackass's jawbone before you could rattle a pot. <laughs> There's a town a couple of days up the trail. There's some law there, and uh, you can settle whatever uh, you might want to get settled. You're welcome to go along with us, you want. Well, <laughs> bittles like this passing around, a man deserves to be hoeing rocks if he walked away. <laughs> Ashi, pick him up some clothes. Yeah, he can ride in the supply wagon. I'm much obliged, Mr. Faber. Oh, and, uh, I'll have Jesus see about those uh, irons. If you want anything more, you just holler. I'm hollering, Mr. Witchbone, loud and clear. I'll hot up the pot. <laughs> right. Oh, is it? Look again. Well, what is it? What's so heavy that you got on your mind? Uh, probably nothing, but. Uh... I don't know. I never heard of anybody hiring out for bond around here. At least ways this side of the Mississippi. That's funny, Finn. I never heard of anyone around here using leg irons for anything, either. Still, I'm going to wind up dehorning you. I keep telling the lie still, but he won't mind. Don't that hurt? And no more than toenail paring hurts you. Sure looks like it ought to hurt. Well, he's a droop horn, mushy. If we don't cut it off, it's going to wind up growing right in his eye. Okay. Go drink loose. Sometimes you never can tell, mushy. Sometimes it gets them up here. Hornage. Hornage? That's a good one. This iron is as hard as a miser's heart. Or a two-faced gal smile. I know one like that down Nashville way. That female had a look that could stop the big river right in its tracks. <laughs> An old saying, senor. There is no evil which may not be turned into good. And this thing, there can never be anything but evil. Evil and good is a smart man's right and left. Words don't count for nothing, boy. Unless you use them like a gun. The only thing that matters is who's on the other end of this. Mr. Favor, I feel tall enough to get a haircut in the heaven and a shoe shine way down below. Yeah, well, first things first. By the time we get this herd moving. Well, that's me, Mr. Favor. Fastest talking, longest walking traveling man in this. Friends of yours? 
Two things a traveling man never collects. Money and friends. Herd's all set to move out, boy. Herd might be, but uh, I'm afraid we're not. At least not yet. Something I can do for you? One thing. A horse. You name your own price. I'm uh, sorry, our remounts ain't for sale. You'll be walking. The end of this. Uh, we do our own roping around here, thanks. Now, who are you? What do you want? You got a name to go with that mouth? Oh, yeah. Favor. I'm trail boss here. Right, Mr. Favor. My name's Harger, Matt Harger. Me and my brothers, Luke, Billy Bob. We've been in the saddle 12 hours straight tracking something belongs to us. We just found it. You put that on me once. You ain't gonna do it again. This side of a six-foot hole. Maybe you'd better take it with you, because I'm afraid that's all you're gonna take with you. It's on your boss. We're ready to pull out. Man said pick it up. If I was you, I'd take his advice. Till now, this was private. You step in the middle, it'll cost. Why? I should have bond up her mean that much. Is that what he told you? I ain't running from no bond, cowboy. He's running from a white-headed, bent-legged old rancher. A stubborn old fool that got tall talked out of bed and board by a, a poor mouth, raggedy, dirt digger. For a few dollars I had in a coffee can. That old man took a pistol with him. Ain't much of them left to keep alive. When we rode out, he was still sucking air. Uh, sure, we helped the sheriff track him down. Helped put that iron on him, too. Because we wanted to make sure that he'd be around for the circuit judge. We stopped helping him and we left the sheriff alone with him. And it wasn't an hour until that old sheriff had an eight-inch hole in his back. His prisoner was gone. Asking us to believe that uh, you came after a man like that alone? Where's your posse? Back in Morgan County, waiting. We come along because this is personal, like I said. That old rancher, what's left of him, he's our old man. Comes easy, don't it? All you gotta do is say it, and it comes out pure gospel. Jagger. Own your own land, wear a string tie, and there ain't no need for writing in books or a big stone law house. Just make your own right. It always comes out everlasting true. Hmm. Sure, I killed man. I used cold steel, too. Back in them Tennessee mountains, they called knives bayonets. I got so good at it, old Billy Breckenridge, he put a pair of stripes on my great coat I was wearing. What did it change? I was still just a poor mouth dirt digger. Bleeding in somebody else's fight, but not good enough to come calling at their parlor door. I lied, Mr. Favor. I'm not a traveling man. I'm traveling trash. I could sprout wings, grow me a halo, and holler up the day of reckoning. And it wouldn't change nothing. I'm just back county dirt digging trash. You take him back to Morgan County. What's going to happen without the sheriff to take over? What should have happened the first time we run him down? That's why we brought this along. So we could think on it all the way. Nope. I'm afraid he'll have a mite longer to think on it. You see, I told him he could go along with us as far as the marshal at Split Rock. And that's the way it's going to be. Favor? Tell your story to the law. I can't settle this any more than that piece of rope can settle it. All right, Mr. Trail Boss. You took your spot right in the middle. Just remember, your men, your herd, they're sitting on it with you. Look on it, traveling man. Close your eyes, you'll still see it. It'll still be there, waiting for you.
All right, Favor. No split rock, no law. Like I said, he's ours. What are you standing around for? We got a herd to get across the river. You want me to spell it out for you? Marshy, get that other wagon moving. Mr. Favor, thank it don't come easy to me. Especially second time around. But I'm deeply obligated. Save it for Split Rock, you may need it. Oh, and what I said for them goes for you, too. Why, you think I might try to run off? <laughs> Not with my own personal army in three squares, I ain't. You can bet on that. I am. Well, yesterday it was just him, today it's different, isn't it? What does that mean? Well, Arger was right. You're putting the whole herd on the block just for one man. You got a uh, better way out? I got a better way out. Send him up to Split Rock, or else have the, the marshal come down here. Until it's more than just two sides to a story. Leg iron earns him that much of an edge. Now, do you think we can get moving? to cover. Expect you back with the rest of the boys. Sundown tomorrow, at latest. What about you? I left my rope down there, boy. Just want to make sure I don't get lost. Sundown tomorrow. Now get going. There's a broken man, cold black hair. Delilah, she gained old Samson's mind. When he saw the woman and she looked so fine, he, he said, said, if I had my way, he said, if I had my way, he said, if I had my way, I'd tear the building down. Read about Samson from his birth, the strongest man that ever lived on earth. Read away down in ancient times, he killed 3,000 Philistines. He said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, I'd tear the bill. Oh, earmarks of a revival meet. <laughs> Singing don't make saving. It'll take more than a little toe tapping to revive some of the drovers we got on this drive. Except you, of course. Naturally. Except for the halo and the harp, I'm the tenth generation Gabriel. Uh-huh. So that's why that horn of yours goes off so often. Mr. Favor, if you're referring to the fact that I lose my temper from time to time, you got to realize that somebody's got to keep those lead-headed drovers from eating the wheels right out from under this chuck wagon. Where's Ronnie? Took a little ride. Said he wanted to see that Harger fella some more. Oh, it's about time that boy learned a man like Hugger, conversation, just add up to a waste of time. Mr. Favor, about twice a day for the last five years, I've been listening to a trail boss friend of mine preach his own pet cattle drive sermon. There's one rule, and only one rule, when it comes to pushing the drive. The man and the herd come first. It won't matter if it's St. Peter himself coming at you. If he's packing trouble, you go the other way. I don't care how you slice it. That traveling friend there is trouble. It don't matter whether Rowdy's right or wrong. Point is, he's just following the advice of that trail boss, I mean. My way, he said, if I had my way, I'd tear the building down. He called a little 
little boy about three feet tall. Say, place my hands up against the wall. He placed his hands up against a wall. And he tore that building down. He said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, he said, and if I had my way, I'd tear the building down. What took you two so long? Oh, that old two-corn steer just wouldn't settle down. The steer, he uh, giving you some trouble? Uh, worse than that, got half the herd walking on eggs. Gets it in his head to start running, he just might take the whole bunch with him. Sounds simple. Just fix him so he can't cause trouble. I tell you, Jagger, there's three things around here that can't be fixed. Mushy's head, wishbones cooking, and that droop-horn steer. All right, who's got the cars? I'm going to go. Come on, let's go. Which one's got him? Let's go. I'm ready to play. Come on, Mushy. Squeezing the spots isn't going to change him any. Well, I bet a dollar. A dollar? What do you think we are, St. Louis bankers? I said a dollar, and I bet a dollar. Now, you put up or shut up. Put up or what? You heard the man wish. No, just put the green where the funnel is. Funnel? He's uh, have a nice ride? Uh, mostly long. I didn't find Harker anyway. Sort of kind of didn't think you would. Now, one thing's for sure, he'll be back. A man like that don't give up easy on what he's after. Might be he'd like to give Mr. Matt Almighty Harger his way. Is that it, Mr. Ambrod? Depends on the price tag, Jagger. Big or small, there isn't any price, Rowdy. That's the way it's gonna stay. Unless, of course, you change it, Jagger. Me, Mr. Fair? He was told to stay with a supply wagon. Well, I was just trying to help. Where in my keep, you might say. That cow that's been giving Mr. Quince and Mr. Scarlett all that trouble, uh, along with the short horn, he ain't gonna bother you no more. Meaning what? Why, just walk him down, went out of the herd, and cut his throat. That way he isn't about to cause a ruckus. I borrowed one of your knives, Mr. Wishbolt. Didn't hurt it none. Wiped it off, couldn't clean. Closed up. Everything's fine except one thing. Mm. He's back. With company. Was that you said about a price tag? We'll turn him in here. Pull everybody off the herd and get him over to the wagons. Look, boss. Now, Rowdy, now. Mr. Harger, he must have meant what he said. Maybe you better get inside, Mr. Jagger. Why, Marshy, don't you know? Man's got friends. There ain't no need to hide. There he is, sat like a pigeon on a rail. What are we waiting for? Let's take him. Wait. We ain't got nothing against them Texas Samaritans, at least not yet. Man sets down to play, takes the cards away they come. Them cowpokes just got... They ain't going nowhere. That Jagger ain't worth a shooting fight. At least it's not to them. Might be seeing's all the believing they'll need.
hold the boys here where the bleeding's easy. Might be I can make them see sense. Kia. I told you, Trail Boss. I'm back. In one way or another, we mean to take what we come for. It stands, Hogger. Messing, you got a badge with you up there. Dagger stays put until the law takes over. Boys brought back the word. Pa's dead. Him and that sheriff each had 60 hard years out here. They deserved better than they got. There's a law in that, too, Favor. Now think on it. Think on it real good till sunup tomorrow. Because we'll be coming in then. You stand in the middle, you'll be standing in the middle of a cemetery. Sun up, Favor. Stay with him until you hear different. Hey, Seuss, as soon as you get the Remuda squared away, you get out to the herd, too. Mr. Faber? Just like the good book says, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. What their men won't do to keep their lives alive. You've done the right thing, Mr. Faber. Ain't no other way to cure him. Waste it up here. Better start doing your cooking now. It's gonna be a long night. Boss. I, I know, I know. It's not our fight. Not that it makes any difference, but you were so right. Oh, it makes a difference. Hey, Mr. Faber. Keep all the men in the saddle. Make it look like we're getting ready for fireworks come sun up. That ought to hold off Harger long enough. Mr. Faber? What I said still goes. Well, it'll be sooner instead of later. As soon as it gets dark, you and me are riding for Split Rock. By the time Harger and his boys catch on, you'll be standing alongside the law. Either that or starting a fight that nobody can win. Any objections? Anything you say, Mr. Faber. Come on, Wish. Let's get moving. I'll be back as soon as the herd's bedded down. I gotta hand it to you, Mr. Ramrod. Push long enough and hard enough man's just bound to get his way. Come on, Jagger. It's still an hour before sundown. You can make yourself useful. Unhitch the team. Mr. Faber. Mr. Wishful. He was smiling when he did it. He said the only thing worse than Harger was another sheriff. Or a ramrod with a building question mark. Is he gonna be all right, Mr. Roddy? Better get something to bandage him with and some water, will you? Uh, it was Jagger. Yeah, I know. A squared wish. No. Don't put that man on your conscience. Already is. Gonna be all right, Mr. Wishbone? Of course I'm not gonna be all right. 
go get me the cooking wine. Is it gonna be all right, Mr. Rowdy? Well, if this don't fix him, that cooking wine will. Go ahead. And put something on that head.
Don't even think. Just drop it. Mr. Favor, you gotta have some cat in your family tree. No. That old man, he means so much. <laughs> First the cat and you got me, now it's got your tongue. <laughs> the knife, down there. a knife on him. Why? Because he got in my way. Standing between me and my sunset. Because he... he tried to show me the light. <laughs> Preach. It makes my gut turn over. Just like that old rancher and that fool lawman. Little, loud, lousy men trying to fit me on their own straight and narrows with their three-day-old handouts and backdoor sermons. Pat him on the head. Boot him on his way and wipe the slate clean with lye soap and a shiny, clean conscience. It don't get down with me, Favor. I've been someone else's man since the day I took a first step. But not anymore. Not since I set my sights on a sunset with my name on it. I take what I want. And I use whatever rules fit. Mine, yours, Hargers, it don't matter none. Just so I get what I figure this little old world owes me for being born. All right, Jagger. You can start collecting. Right now. <laughs> One step, one step at a time, Jack. You remember? That's what you're gonna do. All the way back. Uh, not me. Not me. There's only one way I'm going back. And you're not man enough to do it. <laughs> Come on, you gotta eat something. Well, I will, but not until I'm ready. You'd think I was sick or something. Senor Roddy, Senor Favor's coming in. All right, Favor, where is he? Well, he's fine, but I can't say the same for you. You let him get away. Jagger's at Split Rock. It's like I, I promised him you'd be. Anything else you want to know, you can, you can ask the sheriff there. Now, wait a minute, Favor. Let's go, Matt. Let's go.
I know. Head him up and move him out. If I'd meant head him up and move him out, I would have said head him up and move him out. All I want now is some coffee, hot and black. Hot and black and uh, wishbone thick. Move him on, move him on, hit him up, raw high. Cut him out, ride him in, ride him in, let him in. 